Good morning, Michael. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hi, Kadira. Welcome. Thank uh, you. My name is Kadira Jennings, and I'm excited to interview Michael today. Um, I'm a New Zealand-born artist currently living in Australia. It's fascinating to me that as artists, we both have an interest actually in quantum physics and shamanism. Not that I have a physics background, but <laughs> Michael certainly does. While my art practice addresses capturing the beauty and the spiritual nature of landscape and flowerscapes, I believe that Michael is at the cutting edge of contemporary art with the digital and photographic blend of work that he does. I'd like to share a little of his fascinating background with you before we hear from Michael himself. After starting to earn a PhD in theory, Theoretical astrophysics, I have a hard time even saying that, <laughs> never, never mind doing it. <laughs> From the University of Toledo, Michael decided not to pursue academia and went into tabletop game design in early 1980s for a company that made the hugely successful game Dungeons and Dragons. He spent 30 years developing toys and games before embarking on his artistic path. Michael tells us that science is a very powerful way to touch the inner dreamer. I find that interesting. So we might hear a bit more about that in a minute. Yes. I find this to be an intriguing energy synergy of his shamanic and scientific backgrounds. It is not a connection that I would normally have made between the two disciplines. He also says to truly understand our world, we need a profound shift away from the perspective of, of old notions. My artwork presents just such a shift, weaving elements of chaos theory, quantum mechanics, cosmology, neuroscience, dreams and technology into a cohesive artistic and spiritual framework. Wow. <laughs> His highly conceptual work is a blend of digital art and photography, reflecting what he calls his spiritual math physics nexus. Digital manipulations of nature scenes with shadowy beasts, blurry birds, and sunbaked deserts speak to his attraction to Native American spirituality, while fractals burst into colorful patterns, and these are influenced by his love of math and science. Of his art, Michael says, it is often ex an expression of my formal education in physics and mathematics, my personal experiences with Native American spirituality, curiosity with psychology and neuroscience and my interest in the origin stories of world cultures. I've been published in scientific journals and I am a sacred pipe carrier. Wow, that is an amazing <laughs> background. What a fascinating person you are, Michael. I can't believe all the, all the things that you've studied and that you put together. Do you want to tell me a little bit about what uh, prompted you to diverge from your career in physics? and theoretical astrophysics to becoming a writer and artist? Oh, I, I wish there was something like really profound, but it actually, it it's funny, I guess sometimes those things in life, um, the, um, the academic advisor that I had at Toledo um, that I was working with, uh, that I um, actually did my published paper with, um, actually left midway uh, while I was there uh, pursuing my degree. And um, the following advisor that I got uh, was somebody that I just didn't really connect with. He was the chairman of the astronomy department, a really, really uh, brilliant uh, individual uh, that I highly respected. But for me, that was just this personality mismatch. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, and and it really it really threw me for a loop. And I realized at that point that uh, so much of what I was studying was for me very personal. And it's it's been in the intervening years that I've really come to realize that so much of the physics, astronomy, and hard science and mathematics background that I was really, really delving deeply into um, was very personal and something that really was spiritual for me. Um, right. And so that that 
profound change that that seemed kind of you know whimsical in some degree uh really changed the direction of my life uh almost on a dime wow and, uh, yeah yeah that's amazing how um that i think the universe does that so to us sometimes <laughs> you know like and it can be in it the felt form painful of a... <laughs> at, it felt painful at the time exactly but it, it definitely was something that really changed my life dramatically yeah so had you had an interest in shamanism before that do you have an american um, indian background or um, on, yeah on my dad's side of the family and the the, the challenging part is that when I was very, very young, like two years old, my mom and my dad split up. And um, so I never got a chance to really uh, find out uh, first person right. about that connection other than through some of the, the knowledge that my mom had, which was fairly limited. Yeah. Um, and it was something that stayed in the background for me, like deeply uh, below the surface until I got into my, my mid-30s. Right. And there was just something that kind of felt compelling to me that I needed to, to really look at that and, and see what it meant. Because I just, I, I've always felt uh, like there was a really deep spiritual side to my being. Right. Uh, even when I was a child, um, and it it didn't come from religion. It was something yeah. else, and yeah. that yeah. that's really where that kind of started for me. Yeah, I get that. It's um, uh, I think it those things, especially when you have an experience like that when you're very young. I think on that subconscious level, you know, it often takes quite a while for that to manifest itself later in our lives <laughs> and in your case you know having a change of tutors like well, people that you're working with yeah spark that at some level so um who or what would you say has been the major influence on your creative path um apart from what we just discussed is there a person who influences your work today in some way wow oh. On, on a purely personal level, uh, I would say that my grandmother uh, was a really big influence on me. Um, she took care of my of my younger brother and I uh, mm -hmm. after my parents split, and um, she loved nature. She in her own right, she was very creative. Um, and I would say that she profoundly supported both my brother and I. Right. But it now, at, from an artistic standpoint, I would say that Salvador Dali uh, and um, beyond Dali, and, and the reason for me, Dali, not only because of his surrealist work, but because he was really, really influenced and he he felt a really strong connection to physics. And so for me, that I feel sort of a kinship <laughs> yeah. in that in that regards. And then the other one is Pablo Picasso, primarily because he was such an innovator. Uh, and mm. I look I look up to that as a source of inspiration for me. Now, I don't necessarily uh artistically express what i do in the same way that they did <laughs> yeah. uh but in terms of inspirations i i would definitely point to them yeah i'm i'm not all, at all surprised that dali is one <laughs> of your influences i recognize that in fact the second painting we'll talk about i think i see a strong dali influence okay. in, in that so um and, and interestingly dali was quite an, a big influence in my work early on so oh that's interesting <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i love dali and i even did a couple of paintings that sort of i suppose mimicked his if you like <laughs> yeah so um well let's have a quick look at um a couple of your paintings i'll just share the screen and you can tell us a little bit about them so We'll start with this one here. 
if you'd like to. Sure. Um, this is titled Orbital Trajectories in Dreamtime. Yeah. And th this was one of the one of 13 pieces that was in my last uh, solo exhibition in 2021 uh, that was titled um, Call Me Ishmael. And yeah. th th this is a piece that um, expressed uh, the connection to dreams and physics and the evolving of the universe, uh, which sounds like, you know, how are those connected? But if I, I took inspiration, and, and I'm sure, Kadira, this is something that uh, ha having been, uh, uh, you know, in Australia and New Zealand, uh, for me, the, the Aboriginal peoples um, talk about the dream time, and I'm, yeah. I'm not necessarily equating this to, to their, uh, you know, to, to their uh, understandings, but it, for me, it was a source of inspiration um, that deep within us, there, there are connections to the universe around us. And, and not and not only uh, not only psychologically or spiritually, but but also I think from a very quantum level, um, and also from an evolutionary standpoint, um, that that we are the offspring, you know, many 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 thousands or probably millions of generations from the earliest life forms that started here on the earth. Yeah, uh, I've. I find this a fascinating painting and I it, I was saying to you earlier well about the connection that I made between this painting and my work with the painting in the background behind me um, oh neat <laughs> uh, and I'm beginning to put line work in in my work to convey that sense which I think you've captured in this painting of it's this there's a um, space between uh, between the lines if you like it's that um it's almost like in your painting you can almost hear like the wind of the universe to oh. that's that's how i i sort of experience your your work oh that's very i, I love that analogy that's very <laughs> that's way cool <laughs> um i i mean i i really understand what you're saying about you know at the quantum level because i i understand how everything's connected and I think that this particular painting actually gives a really good, um, what would you say, just visual representation of that. Because it, in a way, you're trying to do the same thing that I'm trying to do, which is make visual something that's unseen. Right? Yes. Is, is, yes. is that correct? Is that? Oh, ab yes, absolutely. And I and. It's you know that I think that's a challenge, and and I love that challenge. Uh, mm. Some people get it, uh, some people don't. Um, yeah. And and I think for me, um, it's it's always a, a source for challenge and inspiration to look at some of these cutting edge ideas and and then challenge myself with how can I visually maybe represent this in some way that might be meaningful to somebody that'll spark or you mm. know be a springboard to maybe looking at some of the ideas that I'm trying to convey. Yeah, yeah. And you can definitely see in this, um, I mean, you made a reference to uh, fractals, you know, I can see, because yes. I understand fractals, so I can see that that influence here. And I love yes. the- um, oh, yes. I love the scientific writing in the background. It's, yeah, there are <laughs> many, really there are cool. a number of different mathematical equations there. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, 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 fantastic. I have no head for maths whatsoever. Totally, I can hardly, <laughs> add, I can hardly add two numbers. But <laughs> I admire people who can. So let's have a look at the next work. So, I, I yeah, as I was saying before, I, I really see Dali's influence in this work. Would that yeah. be a fair comment? Yeah, I, it, it's very much a fair comment. Um, that which lies beyond the horizon of knowing. Uh, for mm -hmm. me, this is a very recent piece. I mean, okay. I've 
did this like within the last month. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And one of the one of the things for me that's been really interesting, Kadira, in taking a look at um, our humanity and us trying to understand this universe that we're a part of. Yeah. Um, I I thought back to uh, those who painted on the cave walls in Lascaux and right. other places around the world that left markings and the artists who've been inspired throughout the centuries, throughout the ages to make some sense of this. And right. I, I look at our evolution as an increasing understanding of our universe, mm -hmm. whether it was originally trying to understand the physical signs that were around us, uh, looking at leaves turning up that let us know that rain was approaching, um, creating gods to try to explain uh, the, the machinations of the world around us, because a lot of times things felt very chaotic. And so how do you explain that? How do you explain yeah. how it around? And then, you know, throughout the ages, science came along. And so we started to expand our knowledge. And that horizon of knowing has grown larger and larger over time to where we are today. There's still many things that we don't know. And the thing has been, the challenge for us has always been when somebody tries to expand that horizon of knowing, there's always pushback. There's always <laughs> people that are saying, yeah. No way that can't, you know, the, the sun can't be the, the center of our planetary system. The earth, yeah. you know, the earth is stationary. Everything goes around the earth. <laughs> and so, yeah. you know, you have people waging wars for things like that. And yeah. this is, the, for me, this has been kind of a, um, a piece that deals with that. And I, and, and the, the, the kind of stony, uh, face there that's holding the orb. Mm -hmm. I kind of was inspired by the Easter Island uh, monolith. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. and, and that, e even though I changed it a little bit, it was yeah. kind of an inspiration because people have always wondered, well, what were they about? You know, yeah. what what was all of that about? And I think of like the, the you know, the Egyptian sphinxes and the pyramids and other other wonders around the world over the years has been oftentimes sources uh, that inspired people because they were wondering about the world around us. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in your work here, I find it interesting that it's almost like the sky is cracked or yes. it's like the whole world. And there's no trees. No. And, <laughs> no and, well, no and sign and, of natural and, life. Like have we completely uh, obliterated well, everything? <laughs> no, and, and I put the, the crack. The cracking in there is done on purpose because, again, we it's easy for us living day to day and trying to get by and, you know, earning a living and all these things. We we tend to cocoon ourselves within a comfort level that allows us to exist uh, oftentimes. And so our world becomes self-circumscribed around us. And this sense of that horizon of knowing or not knowing, uh, that's where that cracking is because right. I think deep down there's an inkling that we all kind of know that there's more to more to this existence <laughs> than, than what we give credence to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's great. Okay. Thank you for sharing your insights oh, well, with, your, with your work, Michael. It's, it's okay. really great. Uh, such works of, you know, with such a deep level, a lot of symbolism and, yeah, people, many people um, would probably have quite a hard time unpacking a lot of that. Do you <laughs> do you have like um, a longer artist statement when you show your works with each one or do you just allow people to get um, what they can out of it? Yeah, that's a, that's actually an excellent question. And what I've done, uh, because my the, at least my solo shows, and I've only had three solo shows, right? Uh, but each one of them have been very conceptual, where each of the individual pieces are really part of a greater narrative. And yeah. so 
what I have done either in the artist statement or uh, explanations uh, with the pieces, I included things in the past like QR codes that if somebody's okay. interested yeah. to learn more, would take them to my website for okay. that particular piece and explain things. Great. I've used augmented reality uh, okay. with some of my work to, to add, um, you know, further explanations or further animations that go along with it explaining. So it's, it is a challenge. So uh, <laughs> yes, it yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, what you just said, brings to mind your background in game design like you're really you know that's coming it's all coming together in your artwork yes. isn't it it's quite yeah. amazing yes yeah. yeah I love the I love the interactivity I yeah I mean you know everybody's different in terms of how much they want to engage with you as an artist with your yeah. work and I figure if you at least provide enough uh, they can go to whatever level of interactivity suits yeah. them and then if they want to talk to me directly, I, I always love engaging with, with visitors to a gallery and, and talk one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. That, that to me is really special. Yeah, that's fantastic. So um, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, a question I want to ask you was, like, um, you use the digital and photographic media. Uh, are the photos you use taken by yourself? Um, yes. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. And is there anything else, any other kind of media that you work within or just strictly in the um, digital world, really? Well, within the digital world, there are several different types of tools that I use. Again, depending on right. the effects, uh, fractals. I have a couple different yeah. fractal programs that I work okay. with. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes, I'll use that as a starting point for some works, mm. uh, like like the trajectories and yeah, the little trajectories and Dreamtime was one that I yeah. I started with a fractal uh, and expanded from there, uh, and then uh, more recently over the last several years, I've also been employing some AI uh, as as elements to you know the the complete. Uh, protocols that I'll that I'll employ, but I, the the tools that I use uh, are really in service of uh, ideas that I have. Right. Uh, um, and the more challenging ones for me uh, are the surrealistic pieces because I usually have more planning out than I do uh, early on, where the abstract or right. the algorithmic pieces they're more exploratory i'll play with ideas okay. and then those ideas will start to kind of come to fruition yeah. and then at that point i'll i'll be more determinative in terms of how i want to take it to the end okay yeah thanks for sharing that um what's one professional experience that really stands out for you <laughs> Oh, that's a that's a really awesome question, actually. And I, I have to say um, that it was getting my first solo uh, exhibit. Uh, I, I, you know, that was just really something very special for me. I had um, I had created a piece, um, a surrealist piece that got into a show um, in Flagstaff here in Arizona north of phoenix and um that was for a show that was based on um astronomy and yeah. um yeah. it was something that i wasn't sure whether it would get accepted and it did yeah. and they liked the work enough they they said we we're going to have some openings for solo shows if you're Whoa. interested <laughs> give us exciting. a proposal and i did and <laughs> i got in and yeah. that was just that was just something really really uh very satisfying for me. So yeah. I have to say that was probably one of the one of the more uh, cool experiences. I, for yeah, me. I think um, you know, for most artists, that's probably one of the highlights of their career <laughs> is their first solo show. I know it was for me, but yeah, yeah I think it, yeah, it's always so exciting to know that someone's accepted your work so much that they actually. It sort of gives you that first boost of confidence, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. actually, I must be really an artist because <laughs> this great gallery's accepted me. <laughs> That's exactly right. Here. I agree. Um, so, 
what do you think is the uh, the best part about being an artist? I, for me, I it, that's the that's probably the easier question to answer. And for me, it's my being able to exercise my creativity. Yeah. Uh, I think art is an expression of that. Where game design was as well, where my yeah. where my scientific background was an expression of my creativity as well, and and that's been with me my whole life. And I knew very early on that whatever I did in life my creativity was really important that it right. was that was being used mm. oh that's great and yeah. what would you say is the worst aspect about oh. being an artist <laughs> if there is one maybe uh, there's not <laughs> you know i don't know that there is really a worst i'd say the the challenge is oftentimes just feeling like you're this little minuscule being in a great ocean <laughs> of life and you're just saying, hey, I'm here, I'm here, something, you know, and, yeah. and that's why I think the little successes are helpful. But mm. I, you know, I, I think as artists, we all feel like, well, we have something important that we want to share. Yeah. And in that sharing, we want to be able to reach as many people as we can uh, and that's oftentimes easier said than done. And I think for me, that's probably the most challenging part of being an artist is just get it, getting noticed enough. Yeah. At least for me. Yeah. I think we're lucky now, though, as artists, because we have the Internet and that's made a huge difference. Yes. Um, it's, it's made, well, it's made this this interview today possible you know precisely like <laughs> 50 years ago yeah it wouldn't have been happening so I, yeah. yeah i think we we do have that advantage with uh, which other artists in the past didn't have you know um yeah. so do you have any advice to a young person just beginning an artistic career yeah actually um Don't, I, no, I don't want to say don't give up because that, that doesn't sound good enough to me. <laughs> um, there, we, ex at least here in the U.S., I, yeah. I can't speak for what it's like in Australia, but there's, there's this sense that there's something wrong if you fail. And, and I hate using the word fail. Yeah, yeah. But... <clears throat> I'm a believer in experimentation and exploration. Yeah. And when you do that, you don't know what the end result is going to be. And exactly. with that, with that, you may get results that you think stink or <laughs> that are failures or lack in some way. The problem is when we label things failure, we're setting ourselves up as judge and jury and we oftentimes don't have the perspective. I think you need to give yourself the leeway to fail over and over and over again, as long as you see those challenges as learning experiences, because that's yeah. how you learn. You learn from successes yeah. that you feel like, oh, I did this really well. But you also learn from the times where you fall flat or where you mm -hmm. don't like the results. And you have to look at it and analyze it. And I think for, for younger artists, don't be afraid. Just do it. And if you hold back, you're not giving yourself enough to be able to learn from that. If you play it safe, you're never going to grow to the degree that you really can. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's where you really challenge yourself and you kind of do the high wire act with, you know, you're not <laughs> sure you're going to fall to the ground or get to the other side. You have to yeah. allow yourself to, to have those shortcomings because you will learn from it. Yeah, I think that's fantastic advice. I, um, I always tell my students that, you know, there is no such thing actually as a mistake. It's, it is all a learning experience. And I call yeah. it failing forward rather than, you know. <laughs> yes. It, backwards which language, is what... language can be really <laughs> tricky because yeah we in the u.s we definitely focus on on failure and you well, don't want to yeah. fail it's and the same really, here really that's destructive 
Yeah, it is. In Australia, we have this thing they call the tall poppy syndrome. And as soon as you start actually not failing and succeeding, they want to cut your head off. You know, like if you pop up above the crowd, everyone's there ready to criticise you. It's a terrible thing. Oh, wow. um, but yeah, so yeah, I, I just, I'm totally in agreement with you there. I think that that's just such a powerful thing. And uh, yeah, you've got to, you know what? There's no success without failure. Right. Uh, that is the thing. Um, yep. Great thing. Great advice. Thanks, <laughs> Michael. Um, so I understand that you've been on a vision quest recently. Uh, this would seem to dovetail nicely with your shamanic background. Can you please tell us more about this quest? What moved so, you to undertake yeah, it? Yeah. So <laughs> you and I and, and four other artists have been working with uh, Krista Cloutier, um, yeah. From the working artist and um it it was something that krista floated as an idea that she was wanting to do this this artist intensive you know workshop kind of thing over the last several months and i was very intrigued by it because i had personally um gone on a vision quest several decades ago and so yeah. That idea and understanding it, I was very intrigued. And with what was going on with me personally, it felt like a perfect opportunity. Um, so I, I, I told her that I was interested uh, and she managed to pull it all together. I know there was <laughs> some, there was some uh, tricky scheduling that happened you know, with, with, uh, you being in the future and me, you know, <laughs> with, with you, yeah. you know, this is Tuesday for you and it's still That's right. Monday for me. So, you know, uh, obviously uh, wrangling all, all of us uh, across a globe where we're in very, very disparate time zones could be rather challenging, but yeah. uh, it's been really interesting. Interesting that you talk about challenging time zones. Personally, I have a terrible time. I'm amazed I turned up on time today because... <laughs> <laughs> time zones just yeah i always seem to get it wrong i don't know why i, I, I said to just i said to her I've, i have a dyslexia and time zone management ah. <laughs> um okay so uh what was the how's the experience been for you it's been really wonderful and and it's been for me very clarifying uh, to my thought of this book that I want to that I want to uh, get written and published. And so my main focus during this last several months on the artist vision quest has been uh, focusing on that, getting feedback from you and the other artists and, sharing with with the group kind of where I'm at and where I'm taking things. And so it's been what I like about it is that um, even though it's a personal quest, the fact that I'm doing it in conjunction with others and being able to give my feedback to you and to the other artists and yeah. to receive that has really has really multiplied uh, my time in in focusing on myself and I I found that very magical that's a great word to use I, <laughs> I think that yeah it, it has been that as an experience um, do you think that you are changing as an artist as a result of undertaking this vision quest has it um I don't know that I would say that I'm changing it as an artist. I I would say that it's been really it's given my it's given myself the time to focus on this where previous I've been for the last year year and a half I've been mulling the idea of the of my book idea since the since the end of the the solo show that I had in 2021, um, and and this several months has given me uh, a really uh, a, a focusing of my energy on there. 
the and then the other thing for me i since i since i tend to be uh an introvert uh having a small group to yeah. challenge ourselves to give each other feedback to support one another uh, that's been really that's been really beneficial for me personally I like doing that. And the fact that our group has been small um, yeah. has really allowed me to, to be more open uh, and, and not to kind of hold back. And, <laughs> and so for me, that, that's been good. Yeah, I think it's been a, well, it's, a, it's an intimate um, forum. And I think probably all of us have experienced that um, that synergy in the group and the sharing uh, is of great value because we're working with like-minded people and yes. you can discuss things that people who aren't artists, like, you know, friends and family or whoever, don't understand what we're right. really talking about. Yes. And it's that, I think it's that connection, isn't it, between us that is so valuable. Yes, because, because we... We can say things without having to explain it to the nth degree yeah, yeah. that others will, will get it. And Absolutely. we each have our own perspectives. I get that. Yeah, yeah. But there's a common out there's there's a base commonality that we have as creative individuals, as artists, that yeah, we speak a we speak a language and we understand yeah. the, the frustrations or the challenges that each one of us has, unique as they are to each one yeah, of us. That's right. And that support, I think, is um, particularly valuable because normally we um, operate in a very individual way. You know, we're alone as we yes. work. Um, yes. So it's it's great to have that connection. Um, so uh, I'd like to just ask you a little bit about your book that you've mentioned a couple of times. Oh, so, sure. um, and. I understand it has the same title as your last exhibition. Is that correct? Yeah. So yeah. Is, is the book about the exhibition or what's um, the book about? Okay. So the book title is Call Me Ishmael. And for anybody who's read Moby Dick, you probably <laughs> realize that it's the first line from Moby Dick. Um, it, it really, I was going to do uh, sort of a, uh, a, a short catalog of the exhibit uh, afterward. And then I realized when I started just uh, putting together my thoughts on that, that I had a lot more to say than, than what would be kind of a traditional uh, exhibition catalog of just okay. showing images and, and just giving some brief explanations of them. And, and that show, the Call Me Ishmael show, was really kind of a step from the previous show that I had done in 2020. And, and so what I'm really looking to do is to weave together a narrative that I've created uh, that covers um, the beginnings and the evolution of the universe with spirituality, with neuroscience, with using my art as kind of the, the glue that holds it all together. Okay. And that's kind of a stepping stone to, to the writing that's going to go with it. But it's, it's relying on really cutting edge research that's happening in the areas of physics, yeah. uh, in neuroscience, uh, in in uh, spirituality as well, um, and and so it, it's an exploration of the universe is really much more interesting than <laughs> we give credence to yeah. if we just think again of life here on Earth, mm. and why to me this is important is because if we're so if we're so parochial in thinking that this is everything then our political differences our religious differences and our boundaries cause so much strife 
if mm -hmm. we can realize this is my goal if we can realize that we are so small yeah. in regards to this big beautiful universe that maybe we can have more of a humble nature about us and this world that we're very fortunate to be upon that maybe we don't need to completely annihilate each other <laughs> we don't need to use all of our resources and leave nothing behind that maybe maybe there's some hope for us yet um so that's kind of where i'm coming from uh on it it's it's challenging um because some of the ideas are really out there but they're not <laughs> out there from a complete fantasy they're yeah. out there because the world is so much more complex and simple at the same time but yeah. you need to un you need to uncover a lot of layers to kind of see where the premise is for all for some of these things to follow from there right and it's something that i've thought about for a very long time um, and I feel like I'm at a point now where I need to do this. And that's where my vision, okay. uh, to the vision quest kind of dovetailed for me. And I've been really happy with having this time. Oh, that's amazing. I, you know, I think you're just so at the cutting edge. You're, you're, <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with Abraham Hicks, but she talks about um, being on the leading edge. Uh -huh. and that that's where artists generally are and some of them are yes. more on the leading edge than others and I think you're right on the very <laughs> edge <laughs> I mean your explorations because you have the scientific background you know and you have such a unique skill set and abilities that it's fascinating I can't wait to read your book <laughs> oh, thanks, Thank you. Thank I'll be you. very interested um, yeah so just one uh, one last question uh, what advice would you give a fellow artist who might want to join the vision, Kristen's vision quest? Um, I think um, Krista has a really solid concept here to work with. She is also very qualified to guide people, artists looking to uh, explore who they are, what their art might be, and and especially if they're looking to move forward in some way that that might be challenging or that, that they might have some trepidation uh, moving forward through or just feel like things feel very cloudy and they're looking for clarity. I, I think right. this is a program that uh allows for exploration uh it's challenging it's affirming uh with a small group uh it's it's curated from from mm -hmm. krista's viewpoint and, and i give her a lot of credit for that is that she looks to see uh, who might work well together yeah now, there's no guarantees obviously you, no. you do the best and i think she's i think she's very qualified to do that but i have to say that under krista's guidance um she has provided each of us individually and collectively ways to explore and share and grow that we couldn't have done on our own absolutely uh, and that and that's been very meaningful mm. so my advice would be what i like krista set up an initial interview you know it's a good way to kind of judge and see feel feel out you know is the do you feel like some kind of connection there do you feel mm. you know, comfortable with krista and what she's saying and i i, I think she made it easy to, to give either a definitive yes or no I want to I want to explore uh this idea of going on this vision quest yeah thanks thanks for that Michael I think that um gives people a, an idea of uh what 
to maybe expect or you know how to how to approach it so uh -huh. um thank you so much for sharing your journey and your insights with us today um it's been a pleasure to delve into your um your thoughts and unpack the way you work at a deeper level um thank so you, where where can people look at your work and how can they contact you if they might like to acquire one of your pieces sure uh my website is michaelpierreprice.com all one long word uh and they can also see my work on instagram at mpp underscore digital underscore art uh, and you can always email me at michael at michaelpierreprice.com so yeah <laughs> okay great thanks for that so it's been been great talking to you today thanks michael and i uh, wish you thanks. every success with your book Oh, and thanks, you, Kadira. And, and your future journey as an artist. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, I, I've i enjoyed our time together, and I know we'll yeah. have more time in the future. So Absolutely. I'm looking forward to that as well. Okay. Thank you.